Hello and welcome to another episode in the GDScript Fundamental Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be talking about getters and setters. In programming, getters and setters are methods used to protect your data, particularly used when creating classes. For each member variable, a getter method will return the value of a variable. A setter method will update or set a value to that member variable. So when exactly is it a good time to use getters and setters? There are many different cases. One could be when you want to know when a class member variable has changed. You may want to perform an action when a specific value has been changed. And also when you want to encapsulate variable access in some way. Now, to declare a getter and setter variable, you have to use the setGet keyword. You don't have to assign a value to your variable. However, to create a getter and setter, simply use the setGet keyword followed by, and this order is important, the name of your setter function that has to be declared and a getter function that has to be declared. Take a look at how to declare a getter and setter. In this case, we've declared a variable called unique name followed by the setGet keyword followed by the name of our setter function followed by the comma symbol followed by the name of our getter function. Keep in mind when setting the names of the setter function and getter function, you must declare a function with those names in your class. Two things to keep in mind. The first is that your setter function must have a argument. It must have a single argument. You cannot have more than one argument and you can have no less than one. It must be exactly one parameter. Now, the second thing to keep in mind is your getter function. You're not allowed to have any arguments. The arguments allowed is zero for your getter function. If you do not follow any of these rules, you will throw an error. In Godot, you can set either a setter function to your variable or a getter function to your variable. To set a setter function to your variable, all you have to do is use the setGet keyword followed by the setter function. Again, keeping in mind that when you declare your function, you must have a single argument. Now you also have the choice of only setting a getter for your variable. To do that, simply use the setGet keyword. And this is important. Notice we have a comma. The comma is important. Without the comma, we're saying that this is our setter function. But when we use the comma, what we're saying is that we want to declare a getter function for our variable unique name. And again, your getter function must be declared in the class and you are not allowed to pass in arguments or parameters. Some important things to note about getter and setter functions. When declaring them inside a class, your class will have access to member variables. And if you choose to access your member variables by the normal way, you will not trigger the getter setter methods that are tied to that member variable. Now, if you want to access setter and getter methods locally inside your class for your member variables, you need to use the self keyword. Now, the self keyword just refers to the current class instance. In other languages, it could be the keyword this. Self keyword is self-explanatory. The keyword is spelled self, followed by the dot notation, followed by either a function or a member variable. One thing to keep in mind is that the self can refer to any type of class member and any type of class methods. You can use it for anything really inside the class that has been declared. However, the self keyword is needed when you want to actually access the member variables set and get functions. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that. Now, if you do use the self keyword, you will activate the setter and getter functions. Let's take a look at this example. We've declared a variable named unique name. We use the set get keyword and we've assigned a set Setter function and a getter function. Now when we're somewhere in code and we use the self keyword followed by dot notation followed by in this case our class member, what will happen is we will go through the setter method. The setter method of course being activated because we're using the assignment operator the equal sign followed by a value. Now if you use the self keyword followed by the dot notation followed by the class member name, in this case the unique name variable, what you will do is go through the getter method and that's because you're basically calling for your variable. Notice no assignment operator. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example that will not work inside your class. So again, we've declared our variable unique name. We've given it a setter function, getter function by using the set get keyword. If we were to call the class member just by its name without the self keyword, we will in fact change its value. It will act like a class member normally acts. However, we will not go through the setter method if we omit the self keyword. Same thing if we just call out the class member name, notice no assignment operator. If we do this, we will not go through the getter method we've declared for our variable. So keep that 
that in mind if you want to go through your setter function and getter function inside the class that you declared your variable with you need to use the self keyword now to access your setter and getters outside of your class basically in a class object all you have to do is simply call out your class object followed by the dot notation followed by the name of your member variable and automatically the the compiler will go ahead and access the setter and getter methods for you so to show you an example we've declared our object class with a class that has a setter and getter method assigned to a member variable you just go ahead and call that object class followed by the dot notation followed by a member variable name use the assignment operator a value and you will activate the set method same thing for the get method just call the class member don't assign a value to it and you will activate the get method so there are some common practices for how you define and your getter function and your setter function let's go ahead and take a look at the getter function in this example we have a variable called member variable we use the set get keyword and we've defined our setter function and our getter function so the common practice for your getter function is that you need to return the value inside the variable that the set get function is attached to. So in this case, we use the return keyword followed by the name of our variable. That's because when someone is trying to access or rather retrieve the value from the member variable, when you use the set get keyword, you do go to your getter function. You do whatever it is you need to do. However, at the end of the day, you are still expecting the value that's been assigned to your member variable. So again, you use the return keyword followed by the name of your variable at the end of your function. Keep in mind if you do not add a return keyword to the getter function by default, your getter function will return back the null value. And that is probably something you don't want to do unless you have an intentional use for doing so. There is also a common practice for how you define your setter function. So again, we have the same member variable name. We use the set get keyword and our setter function is called setter function. Now in our function, of course, we pass in an argument, also known as a parameter. But in this case, what we do is we take our variable name. So in this case, member variable, and we assign it the value that's been passed in our argument, in this case, parameter one. When you try to assign a value to the variable name member variable, that value gets passed into the parameter. So for example, if we had member variable is equal to five outside of the class, or if we use the self keyword, what that value does is that value five goes into our parameter in our setter function. We go ahead and we assign that to our variable that has the set get keyword attached to it. This is because when you use the setter function, no matter what you're doing inside the code, at the end of the day, you do expect that the value you're trying to assign it to actually makes it to the variable. If you omit this, what happens is you don't do anything. The value does not go to member variable. So imagine if this was empty and we did member variables equal to five, because this is empty, five is passed to our parameter. Five doesn't go anywhere and so nothing happens. Our member Member variable value never changes. So keep that in mind. Again, assign the parameter value into the variable that has the set get keyword declared. Before we move into code, remember that you need to use the set get keyword to declare a variable with the setter and getter methods. The setter method must have one parameter and the getter method must not have any parameters. When accessing a variable that is declared with the set get keyword, you will go through their respective getter and setter functions. Now, when you're inside of the main class script with the member variable that has the set get keyword, if you want to activate the setter and getter functions for that variable, you must use the self keyword. Lastly, it is common practice that your setter function assigned the parameter value to your variable with the set get keyword attached to it. Also, it is common practice that you return your variable with the set get keyword attached to it inside your getter function by using the return keyword. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some code. So I went ahead and created a class file called human. What I like to do, of course, is use the class name keyword followed by a name so we can access our class with just the name. We don't have to use the load keyword. Now I went ahead and created a unique name. I set the default value to John and I use the set get keyword 
followed by the name of our setter function, followed by the name of our getter function. Now, as you can see here in the first two examples, we are not going to call the setter and getter function. That's because we didn't use the self keyword. Now, when we do use the self keyword, followed by our class variable name, in this case, we've assigned a name called Aurora. We will in fact activate the setter and getter methods. Now the setter and getter methods are fairly straightforward. First thing is that our setter function, of course, has to accept a parameter. And in this case, normally when you set a setter function, you do want to in fact pass the value from your parameter into your variable name. And in this case, when we activate our setter function, we go ahead and print out to the screen to let us know that we've actually went through the setter function. And usually for the getter function, you normally want to return back a variable, or in this case, the value of your variable you set your getter function to. In this case, we're assigning back the value inside unique name. And of course, we're printing out to the console to let us know that we went ahead and actually activated the getter function. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our scene script. As you can see here, we've declared a class object and we're passing the human class to it using the new method and fairly straightforward in our ready function, our virtual method function, we are calling out our variable class object followed by the dot notation followed by the name or rather the class member variable inside our human class. In that case, it's the unique name is the variable. As you can see here, when we go ahead and try to get our member variable, we will activate the getter method. And when we go ahead and try to assign a value to our member variable, we will go ahead and activate the set method. In, in both cases, we will go through each function and actually print to console. That's all I have for you in this episode. I'm going to go ahead and upload these files to GitHub. Feel free to download them and play around with the set get keyword and assigning setter functions and getter functions to your variables. This episode has been a basic understanding of using the set get keyword. There are many ways that the set get keyword can help you in your programming journey. And I'm going to show you one example in a future episode. So thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel and thank you for clicking the like button. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have a wonderful day.